Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all uh, so much for joining us, both uh, in studio and uh, live streamed uh, across the state. I know we have uh, a number of people uh, all around the state, so we're really excited to be able to uh, share this experience statewide. Um, my name is uh, Andrew Reinertz. I'm the Community Development Director with Art South Dakota. Uh, we are the state's arts advocacy support and education group. We're a 501c3 nonprofit that uh, uh, focuses on helping to uh, advocate for our many creative communities throughout the state, uh, as well as providing uh, professional development, education, and public awareness for the arts. Um, this is actually our first attempt at a, a large-scale webinar, and we're really excited to be partnering with both LEAD and with the White Wall Sessions uh, studio to be able to present this in such a, a wonderful way. Um, it's great to have the lighting and to have everyone here in the audience and to be able to share this. Um, so we, uh, we will also, uh, to put on your calendars, another great arts opportunity, uh, we'll have the next statewide arts conference May 14 to 16 this year out in Rapid City. So please join us for that. We have a number of great speakers. Um, keynote speakers include the, uh, the new chairman of the uh, National Endowment for the Arts, uh, the new executive director of Arts Midwest, uh, as well as Lori Poirier from First Peoples Fund, uh, and then a number of uh, sessions from uh, uh, local and regional uh, presenters. So we're, we're here today to, to speak about arts advocacy and to learn uh, together. Um, the, the organization you're gonna hear from today, LEAD, is a really dynamic group that's been doing some uh, great work, not necessarily in the arts, and what's, what's wonderful for us is a lot of this this work, the tools, the tactics, the strategies are similar. And so um, we really are trying to find ways to collaborate more uh, across boundaries and sectors because we're all in this together. And the more we can learn from each other, um, the, the better we'll all be. Um, we will uh, uh, have a number of materials specific to arts advocacy that we have in the back of the room and we have available on the website, uh, artsouthdakota.org slash webinars for those viewing online uh, that we'll come back and talk about more at the end. Uh, and Jim Spears, our executive director, will join us for a uh, question and answer section uh, at the, uh, the end of the presentation. But for now, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, Susan, Carmen, and uh, Michaela with LEAD South Dakota. Hello, thank you so much for having us. We are really excited to be providing the arts advocacy webinar uh, for you today. And just to, like what Andrew said, you know, arts advocacy, it's about educating and informing elected officials, the public, and the media about the importance of arts, uh, which I know is something that people who are passionate about art do every day. Uh, and so we're gonna talk about just some really specific tactics and uh, ways to form your message and then what you do with that message um, when you have it. Very touching up, so I'm gonna yep. come on. So a little bit about LEAD. Uh, we started in November of 2016, and we uh, formed specifically to engage people and encourage more participation. Uh, in the political process, and that's everything from voting, registering to vote, and voting in the elections, and being an informed voter, all the way up to running for office. And so, if anyone is interested in running for office, please talk to Susan after we are done today. Uh, and we are dedicated to the core values of inclusion, action, and social justice. Um, so I'm gonna let Susan introduce herself, um, and then she's gonna hang out and take notes over there. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Susan Kroger. Uh, just a little bit about me. So I'm a co-founder of LEAD along with Carmen. I grew up 30 miles from Sioux Falls, born and raised in this area. Um, I've been involved in politics for about the last decade or so in almost every way imaginable besides holding public office. So I've uh, volunteered for candidates. I've canvassed. I've knocked doors, pushing my babies in a stroller. Um, I've led uh, advocacy nonprofits in the past, and recently I completed a PhD studying uh, rural social movements. So not only is this something that I participate in, it's also my research interest as well. So happy to answer any questions you have regarding research um, or the wonky stuff related to this topic at the end. Awesome, thanks. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, so I started out um, in my arts, uh, this is me and my fair lady, by the way, <laughs> 1999. I also made that hat. <laughs> So I was in costumes. Uh, so I started, I think, where a lot of people do at church, which is the first opportunity that I really had to 
really shine. I played Mary in the Christmas pageant. Uh, and from there, I went to SDSU, and I graduated with a theater degree. Um, I spent uh, a couple summers at Prairie Repertory Theater, one at Summer Repertory Theater, which is a really uh, specific name for their summer theater program in California. And then I toured with Bear in the Big Blue House um, at with B Corporation, which is the same company that does Sesame Street Live. So I've done some corporate theater, uh, I did costumes, house management, company management, and then I served on the board um, after I moved back home of Prairie Repertory Theater out of Brookings for about 10 years. And then I've been in political advocacy since 2007. And so um, really, like I said, taking the thing that you're passionate about and making sure that other people know how important it is and how they can continue to be passionate about it, um, all those things kind of intersect for me here. So we're really excited to be talking about arts advocacy today. All right, and I'm Michaela Sieber. Um, I'm a board member of Leeds, South Dakota. I um, joined the board in 2017. So um, I grew up in Siston, South Dakota, which is about two hours north of here. Um, I have a master's in public health. That was from USD. Um, I actually work at SDSU now in research. Um, Go Jets. So <laughs> I am also most recently a Bush Fellow, um, and I'm focusing on really um, – how to use research through a lens of storytelling and um, reaching people that way and reaching different groups, specifically LGBTQ um, health disparities. Um, I am an amateur photographer. Um, that's something I really enjoy molding together with uh, my research and different advocacy efforts. Um, so with that, co-creator of Transforming South Dakota, which is a publication that was just put out um, highlighting 14 trans kids and um, young adults throughout the state. So um, that is another perfect example of using art and research and advocacy to um, really make a great impact. Um, and really, my journey started in 2015, um, and I've been going ever since then. So happy to be here. So we want to spend some time talking about the why. Uh, and it's easy to say, like, I'm passionate about the arts because they're fun and they're so pretty. Uh, but they're generally, um, it's easy to get bogged down in this work. Sometimes it can be really frustrating if you are from a small town arts council and you're constantly fighting with the city council about funding or you're writing grants and then your part-time grant manager leaves and you're just like, this is a lot of work. Um, and so to kind of have a, a why you do this work that's really strong in your head, or maybe like you might have some adorable nieces that maybe like uh, inspire you to, to continue on when you get really tired. Um, so these are my nieces. And uh, really like why I got started in the arts and arts advocacy um, is because that's really in my town of 1,300 people where I was really fitting in. And I was able to do debate and oral interp and then the Clear Lake Community Playhouse. And um, I didn't really have a good slide for that. So they're cuter. So that's um, making uh, art accessible um, even in rural uh, and small town areas. Uh, that's that's my what really drives me in this way. Uh, and for me, I think I struggle with this question. I don't know why I do what I do. It's just something that's inherently in me. But I think at some point, um, this is a picture from one of the science marches, um, my friend's daughter. I think um, I eventually just made the choice of, you know, sitting back and, and taking things in stride and not doing anything about it to being moved to get up and um, make the choice to do hard things and advocate for things I'm passionate about. So that's what drives me and, and brought me here today and um, talking to you about the things I've learned. So this is the audience participation portion of the in-studio webinar. Uh, so obviously you're here in the middle of the afternoon to learn more about arts advocacy and share um, some of your stories with us. So would anyone like to shout out something that they're concerned about, something about the, what drives you, why, you're, why you work in this area? Yeah, thank you. You can sit there and I will relay your message to our the masses. Hi, Max.
Dios en su Super. So looking to contribute to the culture and expand what we have uh, here in the area. Awesome. Yes, sir. Just kind of to all those in in the in the UK and the the two parts of uh, Norway and Iceland. Thank you so much for my children and for their financial support to keep me going. Who were behind it and not me, but someone else had to take care of all the kids. Six years ago, I took care of the children of Iceland with me. Absolutely. <laughs> Just <laughs> eh. Uh, well, super. We'll hang on that story because um, we're going to talk about storytelling there. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so Michaela is actually going to talk about uh, the message. Yeah, so the what and the how and the who and the why. Um, this is really um, the message, and you can go to the next slide. Um, really what you're taking with you when you're advocating for your arts. Um, it, it all comes in the message and how you deliver the message. So uh, essentially what's in a message um, and this is an equation that I just learned and have been using. Um, so your point of view, uh, what's at stake, whether that's positive or negative, um, um, what's at stake if you don't do this, um, and what is at stake if you do do this, um, and that will equal the desired outcome. Um, so the, the message that you create really needs to increase the awareness of the problem. Um, so your issue, um, your whatever it is in art that makes you advocate, um, that's what you want to increase the awareness of with your message. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. Fine. So uh, the, there are two, um, to me, there are two main groups of actors um, when you're thinking about your message. So the hero is the person you're advocating to. Um, is it the school board? Is it the city council? Is it your board of people that you're working with? Um, parents, students, whatever. Um, and you're the mentor. You're kind of taking them along this, this path and showing them what this issue means to you and how they can um, create their own destiny. So I, looking at it that way, this is something I've learned in the last year. Um, so you as the, as the advocate or the mentor and your job is to mentor the hero and help them get unstuck if they happen to be stuck in a particular um, issue, especially the one that you're passionate about. <laughs> so the hero, um, you need to think about what, so whatever hero it is in your mind, and it might be hard to think about who, like the, this person as the hero, the mayor as your hero, the legislator as your hero, but I think if you think of it that way, it can help you craft your message. Um, so you need to think about what are they like? You know, what, why are they here? Are they doing this job because that's what they have to do? Why are they um, holding this position? Or why are they in front of you right now? Uh, what keeps them up at night? We all have stuff that we worry about. What does keep them up at night is their family. Are they a lawyer in their like day job and they're on the city council um, for their other job? Why, what actually keeps them up at night? Um, so you might have to do some research into the people you're advocating to. Um, 
and how can you solve their problems? So they probably don't want to be in the middle of all of this controversy or getting yelled at by you or other people. Um, and that's a problem that you can help them solve. Uh, <laughs> maybe they don't understand what they're talking about. Uh, you can help solve that. So you're the mentor. You have to think of you're the mentor and you have all this knowledge to impart on them and help them become the hero in everyone's story. Um, but also how might they resist your, your efforts or your message? So um, it it's kind of a lot of things you have to think about when you're crafting a message and who you're crafting it to, and that'll change um, based on the audience and your hero. So doing your research is always a really good um, idea, knowing who you're going into talking to, if it's the school board um, or parents, a group of parents, or you're trying to get your board on, um, on the same page to advocate for something. So um, that's the hero, that's the, the person you're advocating to is the hero. And as the mentor, how, how can you connect with the hero? I think um, the different stories we heard are great examples of how you can connect with your heroes. Um, sharing stories, um, what, are you, what are your shared experiences? Do you have common goals? I think we probably all have a common goal of wanting our community and our state to be um, a great place that people don't keep leaving. Um, so think of those common goals. There is inherently something that we all want, um, we all share. There might be different ways that we get there, but there's something we all want to accomplish. Um, and what are your qualifications? So credibility, I think, is really um, important to, to think about when you're creating your message and how you come off to, to the people you're advocating to, the heroes. Are you coming off um, aggressively? Are you losing your credibility and their attention? in how you're talking to them. And we'll talk about different forms of communication and get in delivering this message, but uh, make sure you show your qualifications. Um, you know, you, you can share the stories you just shared, you know, your educational qualifications, what you've been doing for the last 20 years um, and why they should listen to you. So those are all the things that you bring to this, to this equation. Um, and next. So um, your job as a mentor is to really help the hero get unstuck, and I mentioned that before, and that uh, sometimes can look like pushing or pulling and sometimes feel like dragging, um, depending <laughs> on the audience and what you're, what you're doing, but pushing or prodding, uh, what makes them uncomfortable in their current position and what could move them away from their idea to yours? So what pushing them is definitely, you know, testing their comfort and what, what um, people say, um, that's just how it's been and that's how it's always been. So that's, uh, you might have to push them out of that or pulling or enticing them. Uh, what rewards or incentives, how can you encourage them to bring them over to your idea uh, without bribing or breaking any laws? You know, what, what is it like? What rewards can they expect if they, for example, provide $5 million to your issue? Um, what would the world look like for them? How would that make everything in their life easier? Um, how will it actually benefit them if they give you what you want? Next. All right, so I mentioned um, this is about helping the hero fulfill their destiny. So what they might need from you and what you can provide in your messaging um, tools or allies or trainings um, from you, their mentor. So tools might be data or examples, um, hard evidence. Some people really like that kind of stuff allies, who can they go to um, for advice? Who can you connect them to if they're struggling on what this arts issue means to them and they don't understand it, so how can they vote uh, adequately or, or just make these decisions? Um, constituents, connecting them with other people that are actually paying attention to them. So you are really a mediator of, of all things. That's what you have to be open to when you're advocating is you can help make these connections and build networks for the people you're advocating to. They also might need some training. Um, you might have to help them get to this website and navigate through um, the different grants or something that you're advocating for. You might have to show them some skills. You know, Maybe you want them to you want them to jump on a webinar, a Zoom call or something, and then they don't get that. So like, think about the different things you might need to give to them um, to help them fulfill their destiny. And so their destiny, again, is uh, trying to save the world. Is that what we can <laughs> call it, like save the world? Um, yeah, OK, next. So essentially, all of this will help them make the transformation. Um, 
So from believing or behaving before they fulfill their destiny, so uh, defunding art or band or whatever, um, to then transforming into believing or behaving after they fulfill their destiny. And this is, I think, our tagline is clarinets save lives. That's with Carmen's tagline. Clarinets so, save lives. Yep. So how do we get them from, from, from this previous thing before they fulfilled the destiny of what you want them to fulfill um, to believing this way to now, yeah, I'm on board. Clarinets do save lives. Let's give $5 million to the band. So um, I, I will, we'll talk about a couple of approaches next to, um, so you can really make this transformation with different approaches, um, depending on the hero, um, and what kind of information really clicks with them. Do they like stats or do they want you to get to the point? So this approach A is a great, um, example that I think Carmen or Susan, one of them pulled about, um, something that recently happened, uh, last year about using stats and arts and really providing that practiced, um, well, evidence to, to get, to get to what you want. So there are those, I've seen this work, um, well with some people, they really like that hard evidence and some people, um, approach B just wants you to get to the point. Like what are, what do you want from them? Um, you don't maybe have to fluff it up with all of the extra information. You just, you have to do your research again, get to know your hero and the person you're advocating to and what it is that they like. And that can be uncomfortable. Um, getting to talk to those people and building relationships, but it's really helpful if you want them to um, look at you as the expert and um, their mentor to get them moving along. Um, and lastly, with the message. I think we're missing a slide here. Oh, is um, it? Well, I'll try my joke now and then we'll see, it might come up again later and then you'll all be prepared. <laughs> so how do you get to Carnegie Hall? He said practice. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that joke got moved. I apologize. It it's, was moved. It's all right. It still worked. It we got, supposed I, got, to be, I got my audience participation. Yeah. <laughs> got the joke. We're it's good. It's supposed to be a good segue into practice, practice, <laughs> practice. So um, these are different ways that you can practice that have worked for us. Uh, using your friends or just saying it out loud to your pets, um, practicing in your mind. I like to use my voice recording app on my phone to listen to myself and then play it back and see how I sound. Um, write, write, and rewrite. So don't be afraid to just get out your ideas um, and what you want to say, even if it's just a bunch of like gibberish. Just get it out at first and look at it again and just um, edit it in this. Ask your friends and the people that you rely on to look at your message before you push send. I think that's really helpful um, to make to tone you down a little bit maybe if you're coming off too harsh. You're really passionate about clarinets um, and the person on the other side doesn't get that. So maybe you need to think about your messaging. So rely on those around you to give you feedback. Um, and don't be frustrated. You're not going to get everyone um, on board. There are, will always be people who have their preconceived notions of the idea that you're bringing to them. Um, and don't get frustrated. Don't give up. Keep at it. I think eventually um, you'll get to that common place with people. So um, advocacy is frustrating in every um, issue. It is. It's frustrating. But it's really rewarding when you do make that change in one person, in one of your heroes that you're targeting. Uh, you'll see the difference, and it'll be um, really rewarding. And, of course, I said this before, but, again, uh, think about your messaging for your different audiences, your different heroes. Um, does that look like to you? Is it, again, your school board, a rotary club? I didn't put that in there. That must have been oh, you, yeah, rotary okay. club, parents, students. Um, so that's really important. Is not It's not a cookie-cutter message for everyone. It changes based on the audience. I'll tell you why Rotary Club is in there, because in Clear Lake, <laughs> South Dakota, the Rotary Club would call the school and ask if they had anything that they could use for entertainment at their meetings. And so often uh, the kids who had qualified for state oral interp or maybe a little bit of the one act would go. And that that's that's in and of itself. That's advocacy. That's having someone in the Rotary know that that's happening at the school and working together. And then here, you know, like, oh, there's something that's happening at the school that isn't football that I wasn't familiar with. <laughs> Small town. <clears throat> a lot of football. Uh, are you? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. So now that you've thought about your message uh, and you have targeted your hero, and was anyone else like thinking in their head about Kermit's daggers being the hero? That's a different way of me thinking about that man <laughs> that I um, had in the past, but it's a much friendlier way. Totally. And I really, mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. When I was researching for this, I found an old uh, 2009. 
um, call for advocacy from, what did we decide it was, Andrew? The South Dakota Arts Council or the South Dakotans for the Arts? Because Governor Rounds had um, cut all funding for the Arts Council in his budget. And so this was sent out statewide, like, okay, we gotta rally everybody. And at that time, I was not thinking about Governor Rounds as the hero in my story, but that's a really nice way to do that. All right, so now you have your message. You know what you want. We need more funding for clarinets, more funding for the band. I want to put a giant sculpture over the river, and now we're going to start telling people about that message. So letters to the editor, really easy way to start, 200 words or less. Uh, we have a lot of papers in our state. Uh, there's a statistic that I am not confident in, so don't quote me, as this webinar will live on forever. We have something like the most newspapers per capita um, in South Dakota, or, yeah, yeah see? Thanks, thanks for that. So there are so many papers that you could put your message in, and so this uh, works really well in our urban areas, but also our rural areas and our frontier areas. There are two newspapers, I believe, in Martin, South Dakota. Um, so this is a really um, great place to start. If you're like, hey, uh, my kid is in the band, and they're uh, they're wearing the same uniforms that uh, I wore when I was in school 20 years ago. We need more. We need money for this. So let's, you know, we're going to invite everyone down for a chili feed, and then the kids are going to play, and then we're going to raise money, and uh, we need to support the arts that way. Um, so be topical. Uh, be aware of deadlines, especially if you're talking about something that's specifically election related. You want to say this candidate that I'm supporting is amazing and an incredible arts advocate, and you should vote for them. Um, you don't want to send that to the newspaper two days before the election because the, they, they're out of space. They don't have time for that. Um, so just be aware of those deadlines. Get personal. Use your personal stories. Um, a very succinct version uh, because you have such a short space to do that. Um, but don't be afraid to say as a, as a former... Um, Participant in preparatory theater, I'm proud to serve on the board of directors, and because of my passion in this area, I invite you all to come to the grand opening of the Performing Arts Center at SDSU. Um, this is really important, and um, while you're there, drop some money in the donation bucket. Uh, name names. Uh, cite your cite your source if you're tr if you're throwing out something factual. So not what I did, where I was like, here's a fact, not sure if it's true, and then just spout it off. It's not great. That, so cite your sources, know, know what they are at a time. Um, and then I think there's sometimes, a, um, you just wanna say, oh, the city councilor who shall rename, s remain nameless did this thing, said this thing. Uh, don't be afraid to call them out, good and bad. And the example that I always think about, in 2010 there were so many people running for mayor in Sioux Falls. And there were two specific candidates that were really talking about quality of life and making sure like the sculpture walk and the Washington Pavilion and these are things that were really important and that they talked about uh, before being asked. And Vernon Brown was talking about how at the time um, the population of Sioux Falls west of Interstate 90 was the equivalent of the population of Aberdeen and they didn't have a library. Like that was, you know, here we are 10 years later, that still sticks in my mind um, as, wow, that was a really compelling fact. And we need to, you know, now I'm invested in the arts and I live nowhere near west of 29. Um, but that's a beautiful library that they have out there. So those are kind of the things. And so when you're writing your letter to the editor, I would like to thank candidate Vernon Brown for bring, drawing attention to the lack of resources for this population of our city. Can't stress this enough, be reasonable, um, avoid, uh, and I want this, and I want this, and then also the Governor Dugard did this thing, and then uh, this other thing made me upset, and uh, by the way, the kids need uniforms. Um, so hone your message in a little bit, and um, I mean, you can, you can ask for the moon, but be realistic and reasonable in what your expectations are. So writing your elected officials. So everyone loves mail. Like that's, that's so great. Postcards, emails. Emails is probably the most efficient use of your time. Uh, but a, a great uh, thank you note. If they are supporting, um, I think politically people really, when they're upset about something, that's when they 
get out their pen and they write the, their letter and they want to make sure that somebody knows what they're talking about. Um, but those folks that are already supporting what you were interested in, they need the mail too because they're hearing from somebody else who does not want them to spend money on the band. They want them to spend money on the football field. And so you need to... Um, Make sure that you're supporting the folks um, that are feeling the same way you are in addition to trying to get the other heroes um, to fulfill their destiny to also come over to your side. Um, so you're going to follow up with a thank you note um, just to say thank you for the vote. So thank you. I know, Kellen, that you're supporting this initiative that I'm in favor of, and I really appreciate that, and good luck with the vote on Tuesday. And then Kellen votes the way that you expected, and oh, it's so great, and like, oh, yes, we did it, and then you're going to follow up um, because she's still in that office. You're going to need more things from her. You're going to invite her to the opening night of your next production. And so this is the, this is the beginning and the middle of this relationship that you've created with your elected official. Uh, it's going to be the same concept as the letter to the editor, short and sweet. Um, if you're writing someone in the state legislature, they are also very busy because they have to cram a lot of crazy into 40 days. Um, if you're talking about federal legislation, that also moves really quickly, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about how, you know, how to know where you're going to target your message there. Um, topical, facts, reasonability. Now, if you're like, oh, I'm so passionate about this issue, this is so important to me, and, uh, but I'm not sure I know enough. I am not a content expert in this. Well, first of all, you are, because you're passionate about it, um, but there are really awesome organizations like Art South Dakota, who'd be happy to give you talking points. Hey, Andrew, I really, I'm, I'm going to go to the school board meeting. I know there's this thing on the agenda, and I just, I'm not, ugh, I'm not quite sure where to start. Uh, could you help me out? I bet they would. I, yeah, they're, I'm getting nodding. So they are gonna, um, they're gonna help you out with that. Uh, check the website; they might have something. Check the Facebook. If there's something that's happening really quickly, that's going to be a really good. Um, space to come and say, okay, is there a message out here that I'm missing? Or, oh, that's a really good point. Like, you know, I thought of this as a parent, but I didn't think of this as a community member or vice versa. Um, so lots of folks available to help. So you're going to write, if you are writing um, a legislator, you're going to uh, make sure you're going to write the right one. Write the right. Um, so where is this issue or this legislation or this law or what are we kind of talking about here? Is it the, uh, at your school? Is it in the city? So you want to target the city council or the mayor? Is it state? Um, so, you know, the governor or the state legislature or maybe it's a federal NEA funding and boy, they're just hacking out that um, funding there and we really need to talk to Senator Thune um, but it's actually not in the Senate yet it's actually over in the House and we have to talk to Congressman Johnson about that um, so really um, and that can be tricky because things are going to move pretty quickly so um, writing to your person like your actual representative uh, makes the most impact who can tell me why You're going to vote for him. This guy, this is the chair of honor up here with the talking. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you're the ones who vote for them. That They work for you. And so um, I, if I'm going to target the city council, Pat Starr is going to be the first person that I talk to because he's in my district, um, whereas the mayor represents us all in um, our collective cities. Um, state legislative districts, I am in District 10, so that is where I'm going to start. But also, um, I might know somebody who's on the committee that's specifically talking to someone, and then I have a personal relationship with them, and so I'll be like, hey, Kelly Sullivan, um, she's on the lead board with us, and so I was like, if she's in a committee, I'm going to target her as well. Um, but my voice isn't going to carry as much weight because I can't vote for her. But I could give her dollars, so she cares about that. Um, city council, council districts. Oh, and then include your address so you can prove it. Like, I am Carmen. I live at um, this address. Here's my zip code. I am your constituent, and I would really appreciate your attention to this matter. So for those of us who still use telephones for calling people, uh, you can call people, which is really great for immediate access. So you can call the federal offices. Um, I know I looked it up. Senator Rounds has five offices, four in South Dakota and then one federal one. So you could call all of them if you wanted. I might spread out the love a little bit and, and call some other folks, but um, that's a really great way to do that because he has staff as opposed to the state legislators. 
uh, who don't, and they very well um, will pick up the phone. You can also call the Capitol during session and then the pages uh, take the message to them. Um, so you have a lot of opportunity that way. This print is very tiny. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, so the school board, this is my example. Um, I got real riled up about something um, right after I moved here. So 2007, 2008, and there was something going on with the school, and boy, I was mad about it. And I called the phone number, and I was ready to leave my message, because I had given, I'm certain, zero thought to what I was gonna say. And that man picked up the phone. <laughs> and all of my, like, j I, it never once occurred to me that he would answer the phone. And then it's a lot harder to yell at somebody when they're, they're there rather than their answering machine. And I learned a valuable lesson that day um, about being prepared with my message and um, being reasonable and not being a jerk. Uh, and these were just regular people. So where we talk about the urban areas like Sioux Falls and Rapid, um, you're still going to see these people at Hy-Vee. And so um, this is a, a being reasonable and creating a relationship and thinking of them as heroes uh, and not enemies. I don't know. What's the opposite of Villains. a hero? Villain. <laughs> Ooh. So uh, that is going to uh, play a big role in how you craft those um, ideas. Uh, so just the caution, though, you see things on Facebook, which is um, become a really a wonderful and a terrible advocacy tool all at the same time. So because things do move um, quickly, just make sure you're still writing the right person. Because um, sometimes you just get really excited, and you're like, well, I have three state legislators, and I'm going to email them all. And that is not in the House. And Jenna Hager did not care about my email, and because she was already done. And then I felt stupid because I had emailed the wrong person. In person. So there's a couple different ways to do in-person advocacy. So we put them all under this. So you have like the PR and a general awareness portion. So print, TV, and radio. Um, reporters are going to show up at different things. And that is an awesome opportunity because you are the content expert in what we're talking about. So if you're having the chili feed to raise money for the band uniforms, and then suddenly the Clear Lake Courier shows up, well, hey. Tom, it's so good to see you. Oh, yes, I my kid is in here. Did you know that I wore these uniforms 20 years ago as well? And isn't that so you are already there and now you're you're going on the record and then that's going to help um, get your your message out further. Um, don't tell them a long story. Give them your 21 word answer, um, particularly if you're talking like radio or um, newspaper or, or print. Yeah, so. Um, Think before you speak, and we're going to have a really great example here of when I did not do that. Again, it's a different example of when I did not speak. Be think before I spoke. So the YPN had a candidate forum for city council, and I was standing in the back because I was working at the venue, and Joe Sneavy comes over, and he's like, hey, Carmen, you watched the whole forum. Um, can I get your thoughts on this? Why, yes. Here is a long, rambling thought about how it says... Carmen Toff doesn't much care who's on the city council. Uh, uh, so that's not true. Uh, but I clearly said those words out loud. So that's not great. Um, but, you know, I do care about, you know, the eye, the quality of life and vibrant downtown, high paying jobs. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people say we have a lot of jobs, but I'm going to say a lot one more time. And then I'm going to end a sentence in a preposition because I gave no thought about what I was going to say and what was important to me. So not ideal, and this just lives in infamy. It's just on the internet forever. Um, radio stations are a really great opportunity, and you can call up um, your local radio station and say, hey, we have this event going on. I really want to get the word out about the band uniforms and the clarinets. Uh, here in Sioux Falls, Results Radio is all in one building, and you can easily do three, four interviews in, in an hour, and it's incredibly convenient. Um, a lot of the radio stations have morning shows, and they're like, hey, come on down, and you're this, we're going to talk about this, and be so great, and, and see the kids, and they're going to look so adorable in their outfits. Um, so you have, a, you have a message you want to get out whether it's an event or you want to um, say, you know, we're all going to have this rally, we're going to stand outside of 
the Kello Studios and we're gonna hold our signs because they're holding a candidate debate at Kello and we really wanna get the word out. Um, so we're gonna do a sign making party and we're gonna, we're gonna um, really show our supports for the arts. Um, that's a really great um, story that I think um, you'd have really good luck pitching at uh, your local radio station. So don't forget about that particular medium. And television, uh, much like the reporter that showed up at the YPN candidate, there was a different YPN uh, candidate forum, and all three stations showed up, and because I do a lot of talking at different lead things, someone came over and they're like, hey, you know, would you like to be on, you know, tell us what you, know, you guys are looking for in your mayoral candidate, and who are you here supporting? I'm like, oh. I'd be happy to. Could you just give me one minute? And then I went over and I put on some lipstick and I was like, this is what I'm thinking about and this is what it's important to me. And uh, Okay, so that, um, and then they have to set up and they have to get their mic ready, so don't rush into it. Um, give yourself the time that you need to really make your articulate argument uh, because you already have it, because you did it already with Michaela. Also in person, so this is your press in person, now you're just gonna talk to people's faces. Um, so you're gonna go to the mayor's office on the website, you can call up Julie Wilson, that's his uh, assistant, and you're like, I'd really like um, a meeting with the mayor uh, or someone in that office so I could talk about how important this is. We're really looking to start this initiative uh, and uh, I would really like his buy-in or get his uh, opinion or, or how can uh, we partner with the city in this way city council meetings, their agendas are printed ahead of time, and there's an open forum um, opportunity to speak. So you can just go in and they're like, oh, do we have any comments from the constituents today? And there you are, ready with your short and concise story and message. Uh, it's fantastic, and that's every week. Also at Carnegie Hall, a different one. Uh, there's legislative coffees. So if something is happening in the state legislature and then the short 40 days that we have, there are coffees in several different communities. So Sioux Falls, Rapid City, Aberdeen, Brandon, Yankton. Um, there are so many opportunities to go and speak um, to your legislator and ask questions and say, hey, I saw this bill is coming through. I just want you to know that you know funding for the arts is really important. And um, not only is it important to me, but it's important to me as a, a parent. And uh, this has really made a big difference in, in my kids and um, I just wanted you to support that. So there's another opportunity to do, to, um, and then you're meeting someone else at the legislative coffee and they're like, oh my gosh, I care about that too. And you're like, oh, that's so great. We're having chili feed and then we're gonna go to Kelly and we're gonna hold signs and now you just recruited someone else uh, to be a part of your advocacy. So you're just spreading your message of changing the world over and over. Um, there are lobby days that um, are also happen during the legislative session, and so if that's something that you're passionate about, um, make sure that you look up that calendar. We're going to talk about that again in a moment. Um, the federal delegation, like I said, they all have local offices, so Watertown, um, Aberdeen, they're all kind of in different areas. Um, I know... The governor, um, Governor Nome, when she was in Congress, she had a, an office in Watertown because that was close to where she was from. So you can look up those on their websites and just go in and say, hey, I'd like a meeting um, with one of your constituent services folks. And I just want to talk about how important um, this thing is that's happening federally. And they love that. That's their job is to talk to you. And that's spectacular. And then there are some fun visibility things. We talked about like having a rally and, you know, like support the arts. Um, and Burma Shave is where you kind of line up. So if it's election day and you are, um, say you're a high school teacher and everyone gets extra credit because the polls open at seven and so before school, we're all gonna get our signs and they're gonna say, you know, be an arts voter and they're gonna be right outside the polling station and woo, and then it's gonna be awesome. It'd be so great to see that. Um, when you pull up to the polling station, so that's a Burma shave. And then you can just have a press conference. Like, hey, we are starting this, um, the capital campaign. We're gonna raise money for this. We're gonna hold a press conference. You're gonna get all your arts advocates there. You're gonna lay out your plan. Um, and you're gonna invite all of the media to that because you have all of these great contacts because you've been talking to them this whole time. And so that's another um, great way to get your message out in person. So speaking of lobby days, Arts Advocacy Day at the Capitol is coming up February 12th. So if you would like to um, spread the message and practice some of your advocacy uh, skills that you learned today, you can do that in Peer on February 12th, and you can find more information about that at the Art South Dakota website. 
or you could ask Andrew. So in, overall, your best practices. So develop a relationship. It, um, I want to have said that so many times that you're tired of it. Um, but it is in our small community, in our small state, with our, uh, we have such access to our elected officials and to our decision makers that this is an incredible opportunity for you to use that to our advantage, um, to build those relationships with the media, to build them with your elected officials, um, and to um, make sure that you're gonna invite them to your events. You're going to say hello to them at Hy-Vee. Do, don't, don't yell at them in, in line when you're trapped. You're both trapped there. You got people in front of you, people behind you, and then you're just gonna just yell at them for the statue that they did not want in that park. Um, that's not a great experience for you or the cashier or the people behind you. Um, so leave information. If you're meeting with somebody at their office, uh, if you're meeting with someone at the Capitol, hey, I just wanted you to know, you know this is how important. Um, there's a great infographic that Art South Dakota has on their website. Um, this is the economic driver. This is the tourism dollars that we get in Hill City um, from our amazing arts council. And I just wanted you to know, um, you know, thank you for supporting us, or I really hope you would support us because this is really important um, to our community and um, this is what we get back from it. So leave the information with them and then follow up with a thank you note. Um, that's all part of your relationship building as well. And here are some adorable children that lead South Dakota took to our lobby day last year. Look how perfectly they photograph on those stairs. And this was us uh, building up the next generation of leaders. So we wanted to, we gave them a tour of the Capitol. Um, so the, the Capitol can be kind of intimidating. And uh, if you go as a child and you got a tour and you got to sit in the big desks, um, it just really makes government a lot more accessible. And it shouldn't be something that when we hide our capital in the middle of the tundra in the state and make it very hard to get to, um, going as a kid uh, really kind of demystifies the process. And so that was part of what we wanted to do. Uh, then there's, this is, uh, a visibility rally that I was a part of several years ago, and I always include it because it photographed so cool in the snow, and we were a part of a, a national, they're like, oh my gosh, those kids out in South Dakota, they really were standing outside with everybody else in like this beautiful snow globe. Um, so even uh, a lunchtime um, advocacy effort, uh, they sure sent the newspaper, or not the, uh, well, the newspaper, but also like we were kind of across from Kello, and so they were like, go look at the kids in the pink and the snow, and so then there we were, because um, you want to make something engaging and, and um, good content for them as well. Uh, so just a little bit about engaging online. So we talked about written word, media, in person. So online is really going to be easy. Uh, and you have to decide how much bang for your buck that you're getting in this. So are you contributing anything? Or are you just sending out your message um, that's not particularly well thought out, that's very, very lengthy, and by the time you get to the point, people have stopped reading. Um, so make sure that you're contributing to the cause that you want. Um, spread facts, not fake news. Uh, blogging was... Uh, might be enjoying a renaissance, and there are several newsletters that are available. Uh, Medium.com is a place where anyone can blog without having your own blog, so there are some opportunities for that way. Do check your spelling and grammar. Save lives. Uh, and don't get fired. Like a, a disclaimer that says, these opinions are mine and mine alone uh, I, is not going to help you. Like that is on Twitter. That's not going to um, be a legal argument for keeping your job um, as we are a so-called right-to-work state. So just keep some of those things in mind while interacting online. How are we doing? Questions? If you, people are, I see nodding. I assume our online folks are doing great. Okay, super. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about political engagement. So in an election year, we have a lot of opportunities not only to interact with our elected officials that are um, right now representing us in city and state, uh, but we have some folks who would like to represent us. And so as arts advocates, you have an opportunity to find out, like, how do you feel about arts in schools? You know, what do you, oh, oh, did you, you were in the marching band? That's so interesting. We would love to have you come to our chili feed and a uniform fundraiser. Um, so being an arts voter and keeping, like, obviously that's not going to be the only thing that you 
care about. But if you know that this is something that I'm passionate about and I want to know how other people are going to vote on this, kind of keeping that as your identity or top of mind when you're engaging with these folks is just a really, again, a great way to introduce yourself, say, hey, um, I know that you're running for Senate right now. I just wanted you to know um, I'm really passionate about the arts in our community. I'm, I'm a part of our community playhouse. And then I am also, you know, I volunteer every May to help put the new sculptures up. And it's like the best day of the year. Um, and we'd love to have you come down and, and help us with that. And, um, you know, tell me your arts experience. So this, I don't know how well this is going to show up on here, but it's just a, um, this is the Seattle Arts Voter Guide. And so this is something that they're organization puts together and so when these folks go to vote they can say okay they, they did a survey and this person um, is really passionate about the arts has an arts background and has pledged to uh, really keep quality of life at the top and this other person says you know um, we got to fix those roads and bridges and arts are something nice to look at but my priority is not raising taxes and roads and bridges and you're like well maybe that's not I mean I like roads and bridges but maybe that's not like uh, the person I'm gonna vote for um, so this is uh, one way that you as a community can put this together for your school board. You could put it together for your city council um, or whatever issues that you know um, is coming up. Creating a voter guide is one way um, to advocate for your position. The uh, Texas Vote Dallas, Arts Votes Dallas um, pledge. And so this is something that they created and you could use this for yourself. You could hand this out at your rally that says, I um, am an arts voter, and in the upcoming election, I'm going to keep this top of mind. This is what I um, am passionate about. And then let's say this had a little tear-off card where I wrote my name and Carmen, here's my address. And then let's say you on the Hill City Arts, arts Council is then going to contact me right before the election, like, hey, Carmen, um, I know you're an arts voter, and we thank you so much. Don't forget, the election is coming up. Um, it's this day. Um, and we just want to thank you for your vote. So now you've increased your mailing list for the Hill City Arts Council. You know that you have someone who's passionate. You should definitely invite me to things. I'm probably going to give you money. And um, now that you know, I'm an engaged voter. So that's um, a really great way to target one person one time and end up with quite a bit um, out of your one engagement with me. And then just some different vote smart, vote art. Um, I'm an arts voter. Again, these are just um, kind of cool ways to identify yourself. And if you see someone at the legislative coffee who's wearing this button, and then you're going to definitely go over and want to make friends with them because you know that you have these shared values in common. So elections matter to the arts. Elections matter um, to everything. But when you talk about something that is um, comes from grant money or government funding or tax dollars, uh, elections um, really matter as far as um, how some of those things get funded. And so there is a podcast called Arts Votes 2020 with Ben Folds. Uh, and so you can see the link here, or you can Google it. And so they are doing a 30 minute podcast with all of the um, folks that are running for president. And there are several old ones that, uh, with folks that are no longer running for president. But if you would like to see um, what Marianne Williams, Williamson, Williams, Williamson, how she felt about the arts when she was running for president, you can find that podcast there. Um, and so I think that's a really interesting way to do that. And that's something um, that your local podcast could host. That's something that you could, when you were like, hey, guys, I, I was able to catch up with... Um, Skylar Borglum and Dan Allers at this event, and I just, you know, I'm going to email some of my friends about it. So there's a, a, a couple different ways that you can do that. Oops. Um, ask candidates about their background in the arts and their stance on arts issues and things that are important to you, because uh, candidates are everywhere. They should be knocking on your door, so that's an excellent opportunity, because now they have come to you. They have literally come to your door to tell you um, and ask for your vote, and so this is an opportunity for you to say, oh, you know what? I'm actually really passionate about the arts and clarinets, and I want to know how you feel about clarinets. Candidate at my door. Uh, they're at events that you're at. They are at chili feeds. They are at county fairs. They are um, crisscrossing our beautiful state, and uh, they want to hear from you because they want your vote, and you, they, want, um, they want to work for you. So this is an excellent opportunity to, to take advantage of that. Um, you can also interact with them online, and let me tell you, I found this tweet from 2013 uh, of me trying to interact with 
uh, Rick Wyland because he was at the Lincoln Stars and Stripes Spectacular debate tournament supporting his daughter who um, was competing that day. And I was like, here's someone running for co- running for the Senate um, who truly believes in arts and is here supporting his kid. And that's really awesome. And I wanted him to know that I saw him and that um, I really appreciated that. And maybe your candidate has, um, they started a new account uh, when they started to run for something. And so your your Twitter account, I bet Aaron Castle has a lot more Twitter followers than somebody who just like woke up and was like, okay, I'm launching my campaign today. Um, so now you want other people to know like, hey, that Rick Wyland, he was, he was here supporting his kid. He definitely supports the arts. You know, we should really look at him and maybe we should invite him to an arts council meeting that we're having. And he then can tell us why we should give him our vote. Um, and uh, um, all of his uh, reasons why he supports the arts. Uh, elections also, oh, so save the date. Uh, we have, uh, like I said, it's an election year in all of our communities. So we just put the Sioux Falls City election and then South Dakota's primary election on here. So the um, important deadlines to remember, register to vote if you have not. If you have moved, you're going to want to double check your voter registration and make sure that that is all up to date so you are able to participate in democracy on your way to saving the world. Um, oh, and then you, if you're registered independent or no party, you can vote in the Democratic par- primary because they have an open primary. And to, be, to vote in the Republican primary, you have to be registered Republican. And with that, register to vote. Vote arts. Uh, so I think Jim is going to come up and talk a little bit. And Suze, do you want to come back? And I cannot see you in the clock. How are we doing? Doing okay. Doing good. It's on me too. Thank you. It's good to see you all. You look great on the internet, by the way. I was watching back there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you, Michaela and Carmen and Susan, for being here today. Uh, I think it's great to get a, a voice um, uh, that does this work uh, day in and day out and get some advice from the, from the pros and, and make some uh, relationships maybe outside of just our arts, uh, our core arts group. Um, so I want to say thanks to Lead for being here and, and making this happen. Um, I thought everything was so well stated. Uh, I want to thank Whitewall as well for uh, their work. This is a great um, part of our town. Uh, I've had the pr- privilege of playing in this space before, not speaking. So this is a this is a great uh, uh, addition to our art scene. And if you ever get to Sioux Falls, you got to come down and check out the studio. There are signatures um, and drawings from all the bands that have played here. So it's a pretty cool space. And then last but not least, I really want to thank uh, the team at Arts South Dakota, Andrew Reinartz, who you met, and he'll be coming back up, and then um, Sherry Cosell, who is in Lead, the actual town of Lead. <laughs> she is uh, there right now. She's our communications director. Uh, we have just a great team. Um, I can't say enough good things about them. So I just wanted to add a few things. Um, I don't really have much to add. You covered uh, so much of what's on my mind when I talk to people about advocacy. Um, but I do, that. my favorite part of this presentation was saving the world, one clarinet at a time. <laughs> um, I, th- I think that was re- well said. Trumpet would have been a little better, uh, uh, <laughs> those who know me. But uh, no, clarinet's pretty good. Um, so a couple things hit me. Um, I love the hero idea. I think that's so important because I think we're intimidated uh, sometimes when we go talk to policymakers or elected officials. So I think uh, that this idea of thinking of them as a hero, um, and one of the things I always add when, when, when I'm in PR in DC is a thank you. Uh, their work is tough. And sometimes we don't always agree with their decisions, but um, I think they're doing it for the right reasons, You know, especially those folks that I've met from South Dakota. Um, they're sincere in their beliefs, and, and, and it's tough work. So I think it's very important for us to thank them for representing us, even if they're sometimes making decisions that we don't agree with. By saying thank you first, that's a really great way to start building that relationship. Um, this idea of um, talking about what's at stake, um, 
And a lot of times for us, especially right now, what's at stake is very positive. We have a positive message to talk about. So I think uh, t- telling the positive stories are just as important as uh, talking to policymakers when something isn't going as we wish it would. Um, uh, a couple other things that I noted was this idea of keep at it. I think that is so important um, for our arts community. Uh, it's you know it's it's going to take lots of conversations and it's going to take a long time. Uh, it doesn't happen in one meeting or in one event or one letter. So this idea that you got to keep after it and, and and be positive and build those relationships. Um, and then the last thing that I think. Uh, I really keyed in on is inviting those policymakers to your events. So if you're out there representing an arts organization or you're an artist, make sure that that legislator is on your invite list. Make sure your city councilor, your mayor, uh, your state or, or your uh, senators or representatives, make sure they're all on your invite list and reach out and make that invite. Um, because that's the way I, I think we'll really tell our stories when policymakers attend events, go to concerts, go to exhibits, um, and, and, and interface with the great work that's being done all across South Dakota. So uh, I've been given a list of a few things I'm supposed to mention, so I'll make sure I look at this. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, the resources. Uh, Carmen, you mentioned resources. We do have a lot of resources on our website. Um, Art South Dakota is working to build a, re- a resource library for your benefit, for your use when having these conversations. I think we've done a good job of building resources that probably are, are a bit more state and national in focus. I think one of the areas that we'd like to do more work in is trying to drill down into to community uh, focused data. That's something that's on our list. But these resources, uh, you can find them on our website for those that are, are in the audience today. We have these uh, on the back table, but we have um, these cool deals uh, produced by Lemonly here in Sioux Falls. If you know Lemonly, they're uh, outstanding at the infographics uh, that they uh, are nationally, maybe internationally known for, Um, but they did one for us. It's It's a really cool piece. It's art in itself. You can hang it on your fridge or your window when you're done. Um, So we have that for you to take. Um, And then the other piece that we have that I think does a really good job of putting a lot of information on one piece of paper is this FAQ, this um, single piece of paper. You can find this on our website. We update it every year with current data. A couple of things that just just to give you uh, some insight, there's there's a lot on here. I'm not going to go through it all. Um, But for example here, when we talk about the South Dakota Arts Council, um, our state's uh, governmental arts uh, agency, um, their impact is pretty astounding, and it's far and wide. Uh, just last year, they, uh, they gave out 448 grants that reached 106 communities and reached 91% of South Dakota's counties. So it's stuff like that. When you're talking to a legislator, you can really say that the work being done by the South Dakota Arts Council in this example reaches everyone. It gets across the state. So it's this kind of data that really backs that up. So that's on our website. Um, and, and one of the things that I, I learned early on when I went to an Americans for Arts conference is this, this idea of no story. When you're talking with a policymaker and you're advocating, no story without data and no data without a story. So make sure you make it personal, tell your story, but make sure you back that up with something that really reinforces your point. And so we've tried to provide some of that on our website. You'll find a lot of that as well on the Americans for Arts website, um, which is our national partner. So get your data. Carmen mentioned this. You know, um, um, build, build your, your portfolio of data that you want to take to your meeting or, or use in your letter, but make sure you make it personal. Don't just, don't just be spouting out a bunch of data points because that gets pretty old. And, and policymakers are going to see that. They're going to you know, see that used time and time again. But when you make it personal, I think that really is the most effective. A um, couple other things that uh, I like to talk about um, in, in regards to the arts. Uh, I, don't, I don't think of the arts as partisan. Okay, So when I'm meeting with a policymaker, uh, a, a legislator, to me, the arts are not a partisan issue. Um, it's it's a people issue. It's a, it's an American issue. It's a South Dakota issue. It's a your community issue. It's not a partisan issue. Um, 
I've yet to meet someone that doesn't like the arts. We all have maybe different ideas of how we support the arts or how what we believe um, is needed for the arts or creative industries, but I've yet to meet a person who doesn't feel the arts are impactful or a positive part of our, our communities. So I think it's very important to go in with that mindset. We're not talking about a partisan issue here. Um, it, although sometimes we're advocating for a partisan idea, but the arts really truly are, are not partisan. Um, and then this idea of building relationships, you talked a lot about that, but I really want to reinforce that. In South Dakota, you can build a personal relationship with your legislator. You will see them at the local grocery store. You will see him or her at church or at dinner some night. And so it's not hard to go and shake hands and introduce yourself and create that connection. Um, so make sure that's a, a, a part of your strategy um, so you're not a stranger. And um, we talk about this often. Don't wait till there's a, a problem, right? And this is part of building relationships. Don't wait till there's an issue that you need resolved. You need to have that relationship right now. Talk about all the good things happening, build the relationship, and then when you need to, to go to that policymaker and you need an ally, you need someone you can talk to, you'll be much more effective because they'll know you're coming from a sincere place. Um, and then um, the, the staying connected. So I think we talked about that in terms of Art South Dakota on our website, but, but do stay connected with, with us. Um, I know that sounds a little self-serving, but we really try to keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on. Um, we try to be out front on these issues. A couple years ago when there was a, a potential um, uh, uh, repeal of the state tourism tax, which supports our Arts Council. Some of you, you, some of you may remember that was House Bill 1206. Um, we were the first to find out of, about that uh, alongside of tourism. I got a call early in the morning one morning from someone in, uh, in tourism to make us aware of that. So we typically are going to know about that stuff way out in advance. So we'll, we will be there to inform you. So stay connected with us. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to say um, to button up some of my comments here is this idea of advocacy every day. Um, you know, I think we need to be telling our stories uh, every day. It doesn't always need to be to policymakers or legislators or decision makers. It needs to be to your neighbor. It needs to be to your family. You need to go out and, and be making your case all the time um, and, and uh, drumming up that support within community. Because um, it takes all of us to make this happen. So you, to me, it really is something we need to be doing every day and not just waiting for a, a, a policy or legislative reason to make our case. Um, so I would encourage you to be thinking about that and, and, and about the unique way that our country supports the arts and primarily the arts or the, the nonprofit ecosystem. It's through, uh, it's through citizens that want to get engaged, that want to give time, that want to give resources, uh, that want to give their talent. Um, that's how this thing all happens, right? Uh, it's not just because of government. Um, it's very much driven by, by our community. And um, so, so advocate to, to your neighbor, to your friends, to, your, your, you know, to, to the person uh, you meet at the grocery store. Get them engaged. Get them to attend an arts event. Get them, invite them to your concert or to your reading or exhibit. That's, that's how we really drive this forward. Awesome. Thanks. And I believe now we have time for questions. Andrew has a microphone for you. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Lawrence, can you sing a song for us? Uh, what do you want to hear? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Can't put in a nickel and get a dollar song. Okay, so um, question about uh, connecting artists. We have a state that's really spread out. And our people are spread out. And if you look at like East River, West River as an extreme, we have people who need each other, could use each other's uh, skills. And I, I'm not seeing a way where the artists, um, let's say, are getting together. There are ways that they could. I think CanMail does a really good job of at least saying, hey, these things are happening. So that's really uh, a very good resource, and I'd encourage people to use that. But that said, um, 
you know, a database or some kind of way where uh, artists can get together. For example, I have an opportunity right now that I would like to uh, find filmmakers because I have a stage that I can have like a every month have a sort of a mini film festival. But even though I do films, I, I would like to e extend that to other filmmakers, but I don't really have a, you know, I'm sort of building from the ground up to, to figure out how to do that. And it would be nice if, and I'm sure other people have the same kind of issue. So if, you know, it, it, can you guys suggest a way, maybe there's something out there already that I don't know about, but maybe other people would like to know that too. Well, I'll jump in here. I, I think uh, I think that is an area of need for our state. Um, uh, certainly, Art South Dakota is trying to to make those connections. Um, you know, uh, every other year, this isn't often enough, but we'll have the arts conference. It's kind of uh, what we call our grand get together for the arts community. Um, so, those are those are the times when we can get together and have this conversation. But I think uh, I don't have a, a quick answer for you, other than. Um, interfacing with us, I, we do have lists of filmmakers. We have, you know, so if it's a matter of connecting with those folks, we can usually provide some of that data. Um, Andrew's nodding his head. Yes. Yeah, I was just going to mention that the, the filmmakers are probably the, the, the least data we have so far, but there is a resources page on our website that has lists of uh, many arts organizations um, that we inherited from uh, past organizations, and we're, we're working hard to get updated um, exactly for things like this. But uh, anyone that's, uh, that's here or that's watching, please feel free to send in any of your contact info, and we'll make sure you're on our, our resources list. Um, not currently, but that'd be a, another great. Uh, so the question was if we have opportunities for open mics or, or other such events. Um, other than the uh, <coughs> the arts calendar, uh, the other nice thing with the arts calendar is you can search by by title and content. So that helps filter it just a little bit, but it's still that's definitely a a, um, a need that that we'd like to work more more fully on. Just to add to that quickly, I mean, what you're talking about is really organizing artists, right? And we know a little bit about that. So um, one thing that we've done that's been really successful is to leverage social media. And so social media we found is really helpful, particularly Facebook, with connecting individuals, but deepening the relationship beyond that and making sure needs are really met often requires that face-to-face -face interaction, which is really difficult in South Dakota, right? Um, and so a part of that is about kind of building leaders up in communities as well, right? And finding those people who really want to get involved and uh, making sure that they have the tools they need to do so. Um, but I mean, I'm sure some of you are already leveraging, actually I know some of you are already leveraging social media to this end, but any local arts councils, especially if you're trying to build a community um, in your local area, uh, use Facebook to do it. Any other questions, right? Yeah. What's your name again? Susan. Susan. Yeah, she made a very good point about social media. But talking to local artists, I think, is a really good way because everybody, you talk to one person, that would know other people. And then that way you can kind of go down the spider web and meet basically everybody who does something. And people who are interested, they will come out. Um, but I had a question. What arts issues is Sofal's facing? It's a great question. That's a great question. Yeah. Tell us, Jim. Uh, no, I, I was going to say, I don't want to speak for, for the... I, I know personally of a few things that um, I think are, are areas of, of opportunity. Um, and I, I think really there are so many good things happening in, in Sioux Falls right now. I think the, the maybe the biggest challenge is getting our arms around it all and, and telling a unified message. Um, um, we live in a, a community that truly supports the arts in, I think, kind of a model way. But sometimes we haven't been able to tell that story as effectively as one community. Um, so that's one area, I think, of opportunity. And, and uh, um, the mayor has just uh, started a task force to look into this. So that's pretty exciting. We have a, a mayor who really believes in the, the power of the arts and um, wants to make it a bigger um, part of the Sioux Falls brand, if you will, you know, using kind of a marketing um, uh, look at it. So I think that we're, we're seeing leaders in position to, to, to leverage their, their power, their, their leadership 
to bring the arts community together. But uh, in, in my opinion, I think that's a real opportunity for us, um, is, is how can we tell our story as, as one, as, as opposed to individual organizations or artists? Um, and, and not discounting the need to, to also have a unique voice um, as an artist or an, a, a specific organization. But I think as a community, we could do a better job maybe of telling our story uh, as a whole. This crew is all as familiar with it as I am. What do you think, Carmen? Well, I think um, I'm so fortunate. I, I live very close to downtown. Um, my office just moved to the Harvester building yesterday. So I can see the Ark and the murals and the Levitt uh, from my office parking lot, which is amazing. Um, and how do we move or not move, how do we include the rest of the city sure. in, in some of great. those arts opportunities? So like North um, Sioux Falls, and um, some of those income areas that aren't as um, supported and vibrant, there's not, a, there's not tons of activities and different things going down um, or south of town. Like how do we include other parts of Sioux Falls um, and, and put art everywhere? That's a really good point. The last thing I will say, because I was just thinking about it in terms of, of what, what lies ahead for Sioux Falls, I think one of, um, one of our, our, our biggest challenges in the future will be how do we support um, artists wanting to make a living wage in this town so that people can come to Sioux Falls or, or you know, have, uh, have lived here all their lives but say, I want to be a professional artist. I want to make a living creating art. It's hard to do that in this town. I mean, there's some really great examples, but uh, I think a lot of people do feel like they need to, to go to a different community in order to be fully supported as a professional artist. So... Um, I think that's a real opportunity ahead is, is creating a, a living wage, a, a, a vibrant professional community for, for artists. I did want to talk, and I, I meant to bring this up earlier when we were talking about engaging in political candidates, and we talked uh, really hyper-locally about school board candidates um, and uh, your city councilors and your own cities, because those are the people that really make a lot of decisions about those things. But you do have a presidential election this year, and maybe um, you would, would vote, you might be an Andrew Yang voter, because one of his, his main tenant actually is the universal basic income, and how, as an artist, would an extra $1,000 a month really go towards supporting you um, and making a living wage as an artist. Or maybe you um, are actually doing really well, but man, it, you would have so much more freedom if your health care wasn't tied to your employer, if that was something that you were able to um, not have to have that 40 hour a week, really traditional job. So you're able to have that health care and then you have to do your art around that. And so those are some um, kind of ways to think about your candidate. Um, Specific, as opposed to saying like, well, Pete Buttigieg married an art teacher and therefore he cares about the art, uh, which he does, uh, but thinking about those candidates in a, in a different way. That's great. Mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah, nationally, I think that's a, an important topic. Mm -hmm. One of the thought, oh, thank you. One of the thoughts that uh, occurs to me as I'm hearing all this is uh, in a, a, a different kind of advocacy. Um, I think it's the oldest kind. And that is every time we go ourselves to some kind of an event, we take somebody else with mm. us. We meet a neighbor. That's something that Sioux Falls is not real great at. I've been here for many years. I'm speaking about myself. I love people. But I just, as I heard this today, I'm challenged. What about that? We have a lot of things, but the best, most effective that I've ever known is when I tell somebody about it. And I tell the boy, and I bring them, and they experience it. Uh, so I'm, I'll leave that. Thank you. Um, I have a legislative question. I moved here three years ago from one of the few states that has a state legislature that is set up almost identically to South Dakota's. It meets actually every other year for 60 days rather than 40. And... In Can I guess what state that is? Actually, it's New Mexico. Oh. New Mexico. <laughs> and that was not going to be my guess, so thank <laughs> no, you. No, I'm sure it wouldn't be, your, wouldn't be your guess. That's good. Um, and they actually do most of their legislative work uh, in committees mm -hmm. outside of the legislative session during the intervening 18, 19 months or whatever it is. And those committees actually meet remotely around the state. And I don't know if that's how it's done here. And in fact, I have no way of knowing or finding out because there's no realistic way to find that out. Um, so I'm wondering if anyone here knows 
how that's done because in advocacy in New Mexico anyway, um, one of the most effective ways to advance an issue is to find out what legislators are on particular committees and in that state anyway there are actually professional researchers and secretaries tied to the committees um, to find out who those staff people are and contact them because the committees actually do have time outside of the legislative session which just like here is a 24-7 roller coaster mm -hmm. uh, where you can't really actually do anything because people are completely insane. So I'm wondering what you know about how the actual real work of the legislature takes place um, and if there are any ways that normal people with normal lives can interact with their legislators, legislators um, in advancing arts advocacy and actually having conversations or presenting them with a proposal that actually has a possibility of making its way into a bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to take that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling because it's the Wild West here, seriously, <laughs> um, regarding the legislature. So um, we have a citizen legislature, as you all well know. Um, our legislators are, are not paid really well to do the job they do and we're very fortunate that for the most part they give their time to that endeavor. So that being said, most of the work is done during that chaotic session. Um, <laughs> and so um, bills, so any committee uh, work being done on bills is usually done during session. Now you do hear um, certainly of committees meeting outside of session, that does happen. Most of our legislators do donate quite a bit of time outside of session toward that endeavor. There are summer studies that happen and various committees that meet. Um, but uh, those committees are usually very topic specific, right? right? And so um, to make sure you're honing in on the arts and finding someone who's working on that outside of session, um, you'd have to be really on the ball and there would have to be probably an advocacy organization really keeping close track of that to notify you of that. Um, but otherwise, um, I have found though during session, even though it feels very chaotic, that my legislators are very accessible to me for the most part. And so emailing them, calling them, but especially emailing them with any concerns you have. And I know it, it's, it's almost a full-time job. I'm doing it right now, keeping track of all the bills coming through. Mm -hmm. um, last year, there were over 500 bills filed in PEER, right? It's nuts. But if you do go to the website, that sdlegislature.gov, um, you can sort bills by category. So there are ways to kind of hone in on those areas you care about. Um, and then you can track bills from there to be able to reach out, like Carmen said, first to your legislators in your local district, but then beyond that to those decision makers having to do with the arts or other areas you care about. Um, kind of uh, another topic that was uh, brought up online, uh, there was a question about, um, in particular, arts in schools uh, in Sioux Falls and around the state, just kind of what are some of the challenges and, and what are the, uh, the, the dreams for the improvement of the arts in schools and if there's anything surrounding that right now. Well, I would, this was a question that I was thinking about too for, for our group here is just the, the difference or the advocacy tactics for a school board versus, you know, a, a national legislator or a state legislator, because I think in South Dakota to really affect change uh, within the school system, it has to be really very local. It's very local focused, school board focused, so community focused, um, which is cool in some ways and a challenge in others. But I think there, there are probably some tactics or some, some best practices maybe for uh, approaching school boards is it do you have any thoughts on that do you want to take i was just going to say show up to show meetings up. know who's running know who those people are when the elections are i know so many of my friends have no idea when um, school board elections are who's running why they should even vote in these elections so i think that's step one right. yeah uh literally literally go to the meetings would be the, the first step uh, you should be able to find out the agenda when the meeting time happens all that location that is going to be available from your 
school. Um, and then you're just going to start showing up and then they're going to be like, Oh, Hey, you're new. You know, we don't, we don't get a lot of people mm -hmm. here watching the school board meeting. And you're like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I got a, I got a little kid right now, but I'm really interested on, you know, what Harrisburg is doing. Um, it sounds like you kind of have a lot of things going on and I'm just really interested. Uh, my name is Lisa and you're like, Oh great. So now I've met someone I've showed up to the meeting. I've now met somebody on the school board and now I'm going to see her at Harris Burger. And you'd be like, oh, hey, Lisa, it's Carmen. I came, to the, I came to the school board meeting. Oh, that's so great. So now you've created your relationship. And so when, you, when they come out and say, you know, uh, we've decided, you know, we, we looked at the budget and the band isn't going to get um, the increase we, we promised you last year. It's just not going to happen. And you'd be like, oh, hey, Lisa, uh, I just really, you know, I know you're, um, you're, you tried really hard on this budget and I just really want to thank you for your work on that. And if there's anything, you know, how can we work together or is there something we don't get the money this year? What can we do next year? And so it really is a process um, and starting it now, if, if art and school is what you know um, you're interested in. And then there's always going to be that, that, that spark that happens when I am, I have been coming to these meetings and they have promised us money for the last three years. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run for school board. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to talk to us because <laughs> that's how Lisa got on the school board. Yeah. Very true. Uh, so, uh, and our friend, um, Kate Parker, actually, uh, she showed up, um, I want to say legislative coffee and she was incredibly sleep deprived. She had a, a like a three year old and a less than a one year old and she was all riled up about something. And someone said, you should run for school board. And you know what? Maybe I will. And then now she's on, on the school board and she's like, I'm not exactly sure how this happened. Um, <laughs> but now I'm on the school board and I feel like she's been on it eight years now, right? She got, she's been reelected. And so, um, that is an excellent way to affect change, but it starts with showing up and um, just talking to people. Uh, another way to do that too is to start an arts council in your town or region. What a great but, idea! You know, because uh, I, I'm a South Dakota, um, you know, arts uh, scholar. You, you could say it's art res residence resident. And most of the people who organize that are the um, uh, like local arts councils. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to have like wait for the whole state, then you end up hooking up with them. But then that will clue you in to things like this big conference, statewide conference that we're gonna have, then you'll, you'll meet other co-conspirators in, you know, in those, mm -hmm. those kind of meetings. And then that sets them up to, to you know, come to uh, learn things from you guys too. Uh, which which also speaks to uh, another issue is like a lot of people, just ordinary people who are not ready to run or don't have an interest or time to run for something, but they have they have an issue or they have something that they're passionate about, maybe one thing that they're passionate about, but they can. I think they could use some help in just being able to get up and speak, and people almost like you know a statewide. Uh, Toastmasters or something, <laughs> because I, for a good example of what I mean, a lot of people will uh, get up in front of an audience or, and they'll use the microphone like a talking stick. They figure, <laughs> you know, it's like once I got the mic, I can have it over here, over here. Yeah. They can have it any place, and it's, to them, it's just a talking stick. That means it's my turn to talk, but they don't know how to use that microphone. So something like that would be useful. How to stand and you know, where, where to look and things like that. It's a good idea. I learned all of those things mm -hmm. in high school oral intern. <laughs> <laughs> Support the arts in the schools. Um, this is Andrew Reynolds with Art South Dakota for the webinar, folks. Just to, to jump off of that, um, also, you don't have to be a town of any particular size to have an art, a vibrant arts council. Um, we've seen Leola, South Dakota just started an arts council that is doing really great work. Um, Hartford, Highmore, uh, and then all the way, and then, you know, and of course, Aberdeen, Sioux Falls, Rapid City. Um, but, uh, but, but please consider that no matter the size and scope of your community. Talk to Andrew if you're interested in that. <laughs> he's, he's all things community arts councils. <laughs> We're, I know we're getting down, I suppose, to the last couple, Andrew, or we have one more here. Any? They can, they can go. Okay. Um, I don't want to go on a tangent, um, but did somebody mention arts in school? 
no one jump off of that. I, w- when I was in high school here, Roosevelt, I went to CTE and they're amazing. They have engineering classes, biomedical, but they also have a media department. I also had the privilege of volunteering and helping teach the music production class over there. Mm-hmm. And Miss Mailer is the one who runs it. And she said that there's not enough students for funding. Um, they have a fully catered out studio, but to push it further, they just don't get enough students. And I feel like there's an opportunity there. It's just to get the word out because there's a lot of resources and tools, but not enough people are taking action, I sure. feel. Um, and then wanted to jump off. Again, cut me off, I'm going off on a tangent. But you also mentioned one of the issues in the city was <clears throat> it's tough for artists to make money. So I feel like more people have to do more stuff. They have to create opportunities to um, to build an industry here mm-hmm. so people don't go other places because the industry has built up over there. Um, because if there's more opportunity, there's more content going around, not just people posting the social media, but content overall, product, value, people are making music, people making sculptures, more arts. Um, if there's more of a market, there's more opportunity to monetize. For sure, absolutely. Thank you. Do we have one more? I think up here and then, is there anybody else? Uh, I wasn't actually going to bring this up ex- until you did about the financial aspect of, of arts. And unfortunately, without money to support the arts, it's very difficult to do arts because it's very difficult to make a living. And if you can't make a living, it's you don't have time to, to do the arts. Um, I Right now, I'm, I'm working as a volunteer and spending a lot of time doing that. I grew up uh, taking participating in the arts, taking music lessons, and then I didn't participate in the arts for a very long time. And I'm very, very grateful that I have the opportunity to be a volunteer with Harmony South Dakota, where I am helping young people with the opportunity to participate in the arts. However, making sure there's enough money to do that is always a problem. And in the meantime, as an adult, while I was not actively participating in the arts, I learned how to be a fundraiser. And I'm actually pretty good at it. But um, I'm a good grant writer. And that's a difficult thing to do in South Dakota because South Dakota is the type of state where, from a grant point of view, most of the money comes in from outside the state. And that's not a comment on South Dakota per se, it's just that's the financial reality and it has to do with the the size of the population um, as compared to Minnesota next door, which is a totally different ballgame. And in the arts, most of the money does not come from ticket sales. Most of the money doesn't actually even come from grant money. It's a pie that is some of the money comes from ticket sales, some of the money comes from grants, and some of the other money comes from other types of business ventures. And this is something that I'm bringing it up simply because we need to be aware of it. And if people are not consciously aware of it and are myth- you know, thinking that, oh, it's, just, it's grant money and we have to find a big grant, or we have to do something sufficiently creative and bring in, bring in enough money in ticket sales that we'll be able to survive financially, that's not true. And one of the things we've also been talking about is communication and the difficulties of communicating across the state. The opportunities to leverage our creativity simply to make sure that there's enough money to support the activities that we have going on and the wonderful potential that exists here already relies on our ability to communicate with each other. And I've already learned as a fundraiser that half the time I fall, I come across something that I know would work, but it won't work for my organization. It'll work for somebody else's organization somewhere else, but I can't get that information to them. And I don't have a really good way to get that information to them. And so I need a better way of communicating the information that I have so that the right person can take advantage of it. And it sounds like a lot of other people have exactly the same need. And so we do have a need for better communication. I don't know what that's going to look like, but it's certainly something that several people have said today. Thank you. That was something we can work on. Um, 
any parting words from our panel? No uh, clarinet. Participate in Arts Advocacy Day at the Capitol. Make sure you register to vote. Uh, register your friends to yeah, vote. Absolutely. Clarinet save lives. Yeah. Next time, Andrew, we'll have a studio band. <laughs> clarinet band. Um, well, thank you all for being here today um, online and here at the uh, White Wall Studio. Um, this is our first webinar, but not our last. We, we have uh, big plans for, for many more. And so uh, stay, stay tuned. And we'll have uh, other topics to cover. And um, thank you so much for being here today and, and participating. Boy, I'm glad. You, you, you didn't.